live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. On October 10th, 2021, the Buffalo Bills sent a message to the NFL, and an absolutely emphatic one at that. In a nationally televised game on Sunday Night Football on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs, they knew that they needed to make a statement. This was the same team that beat them, and pretty handily I might add, in the AFC Championship the year before. This felt like Buffalo Super Bowl, and even though it was only Week 5, felt like one of the more important regular season games in franchise history, just because of the implications. Yes, the Bills were 3-1 and one, and a lot of people knew they were good, but beating Miami, Washington, and Houston isn't going to ruffle any feathers. Beat Kansas City on the road? Now we're talking. And not only did the Bills beat the Chiefs, but they beat them handily. It was a pummeling of epic proportions, and even though the score might only say that the Bills won 38-20, the game did not feel close at any point. Patrick Mahomes struggled and couldn't push it down the field. All the big plays he was known for were completely taken away from him, as he had no answers for getting past Buffalo's defense. Josh Allen had an incredible game, throwing for 315 yards and three touchdowns with no interceptions and a passer rating of 139.1, which was the second highest passer rating of his career. And after the game, there was no doubting the Bills anymore. This team was legit. This team wasn't just a Super Bowl contender, but they were the Super Bowl favorite. They were the best team in the NFL. Until one week later, when they weren't the best. And the play that took them off the throne? Could be the ball game. Fourth and one. Hang on, let's back up just a bit before I show the play that may have dampened the spirits of Bills fans and may have giant implications on the playoff picture in just a few months. For those who aren't watching in the immediate aftermath of the game, here's a quick rundown of how we got to this point in the game. It's October 18th, 2021, and we're in Nashville, Tennessee for this Monday Night Football game between the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans. This is a pretty big game for both teams. If the Titans win, they have a two-game cushion atop the AFC South. If the Bills win, then they have a three-game cushion atop the AFC East, practically putting that division on lockdown. And this game was a true back-and-forth affair. In fact, not only was the deficit on either side never larger than one possession, but there were seven lead changes in total. In the over 50-year history of Monday Night Football, only one other time had a game had seven lead changes, with that being the Cowboys-Eagles game from 2008. After a ton of scoring, the last being a 13-yard touchdown run by Derrick Henry, who is the human equivalent of a freight train and who is dominating every team he faces, the Titans lead at 34-31 with three minutes left. It looks like Buffalo is going to be the last team to touch the ball. They're going to get the last crack at this, needing three points to tie it, and needing a touchdown to win the game and leave the Titan crowd stunned in silence. Sure enough, Josh Allen is firing on all cylinders, as he starts to drive 4 for 4 and moves the Bills from inside their own 20 to the red zone with ease. A 31-yard pass to Emmanuel Sanders, a 12-yard pass to Zach Moss, a 7-yard pass to Cole Beasley, and a 20-yard pass to Gabriel Davis, and the Bills are absolutely in business. First down, and Allen hands it off to Zach Moss for a gain of 4. After a timeout by the Bills, which is somewhat bizarre since you'd imagine Tennessee would be the ones taking the timeout in that situation to try and get the ball back quicker in case the Bills find the end zone, Allen throws his first incomplete pass to the drive, as he looks for Emmanuel Sanders but is unable to get anything going. Third down, and Allen decides that he's going to take it himself. He tries running for the first down, leaping in the air and showing off his athleticism. While it's a valiant effort, and while it actually looked for a brief moment like he got the first, he was just short. And now, the Bills have a difficult decision to make. It's fourth and inches. If you're Sean McDermott, what do you do here? Let's just say what happened next was highly controversial and left a lot of people having strong opinions on either side of the table. If you take the three points, you send the game into overtime. You make it so that you can't lose in regulation, and you put trust in your team that if they play an extra period, that they're going to prevail. However, if you go for a fourth down, there's a lot that can happen. If you miss, you lose the game. If you get it, there's still no guarantee that you win the game, because you're still going to be two or three yards away from the end zone. However, your odds of winning do increase substantially. After some thinking and deliberation, McDermott decides to go for it, and puts his faith in the hands of his quarterback. As for what happened next, let's just say it left a sour taste in the mouths of quite a few Bills fans. Roll the tape. Allen leans forward, oh. and I don't think he no. got there! Josh Allen looked like he slipped down! This decision received a ton of criticism in the immediate aftermath. It was not universally panned by any means like a lot of the decisions that I talk about in this series, like Red Right 88, as there were definitely a fair amount of people that praised McDermott for it. But there were definitely a good amount of people that wonder why you don't take the points there, 
and why you're not playing for overtime. Heck, I even noticed quite a few comments on my channel over the past 24 hours asking my thoughts on the situation, as they had some feelings on the move. So with that, I'm stepping into the ring and giving my thoughts. Because I had no problem with this decision whatsoever. If you think this was the wrong call, then maybe after this video, you change your mind. Because this call might not be as bad as you think. Sean McDermott deserves a chance to be defended for this play. And I'm going to do so right here. Welcome to In Defense Of. Let's dive right in. If you've watched my channel long enough and watched episodes of this series or Dumb Decisions, you know that I love looking at things from a risk-reward standpoint. In other words, if the possible reward of a decision outweighs the risk associated with it, then you do it every single time. And with this, I'm not even sure it's close. The reward outweigh the risk in a big way. Let's start with what happens if the Bills kick the field goal and send it into overtime. I'm not even going to entertain the possibility that the kick is no good or gets blocked or anything along those lines. From 20 yards out, Considering the fact that Tyler Bass is 18 for 18 lifetime on kicks from inside of 30 yards, I think it's safe to assume that if the Bills go for 3 points here, that they're going to get the 3 points. No shenanigans. Now the game is tied at 34 apiece. If the Titans get the ball to start off overtime, good luck ever getting that ball back. For the most part, taking on the Titans in overtime is like taking on Russia in a land war in the winter. It's probably not going to work out well for you. Since 2015, the Titans are 6-1 in overtime, and under Mike Vrabel, they're 4-1. In three of the five overtime games that Vrabel has coached in, they touched the ball once, and that was all they needed. In the five overtime games that the Titans have played under Vrabel, they have had six drives. All but one drive ended in either a touchdown or a field goal opportunity. The only one that didn't was a drive against the Seahawks this season where, for some inexplicable reason, after the Titans got a new set of downs, they never gave the ball to Derrick Henry. In other words, if Henry touches the ball in overtime, the Titans are scoring. That's just the reality of the situation. Speaking of Derrick Henry, there was no way that Buffalo was ever going to stop him if the Titans got the ball back. I maintain that Earl Campbell had the most dominant three-year stretch of any running back in NFL history, and Henry is the closest thing we have to Earl Campbell. Call him a freight train, a bulldozer, a plow, whatever you want, the man is so hard to bring down, and is even harder to bring down as the game goes on. In the fourth quarter of games this season, he is averaging an absurdly high 6.2 yards per carry. 8 out of his 42 carries in the 4th quarter have gone for 10 plus yards. Roughly 20% of the time he touches the ball in the 4th quarter, he's getting a giant run out of it. Excluding the final drive of the first half, which was just one play to run out the clock, the Titans scored on their last 6 drives of the game, and Henry was a big reason why, especially with his 4th quarter touchdown run from 13 yards out. If you kick the field goal, you are putting the game entirely in the hands of the coin toss, because you're not stopping the Titans' offense, and you're especially not stopping Derrick Henry. Not this late in the game. Vrabel and company are way too good in these fourth quarter and overtime situations. Now let's say you go for it on fourth down, which was what the Bills opted to do here. First off, if you get it, and then punch it in from two yards out afterwards, you win the game. I've said it many times before, including when I did my last in defense sub episode on a decision made by Falcons head coach Liam Bennett in a 1977 game, coincidentally, against the Bills which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. I will never fault a coach for realistically trying to win the game. If there is an option on the table that guarantees a win, and it is realistic, then you take it. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But you have to give yourself that opportunity to guarantee yourself the win. So was this realistic? What has to happen for you to get this fourth down conversion? All that has to happen was Josh Allen executing a quarterback sneak. You need your 6'5 quarterback to successfully fall forward. That's it. And Allen is very good at the quarterback sneak. In fact, he's one of the best in the NFL at it. Over his first two seasons, Allen was placed in 24 quarterback sneak situations, and he converted an astonishing 23 of them. He's been good at the sneak his entire career. Entering this game, he had 31 quarterback sneaks and converted 29 of them. If you're doing the math at home, that's a success rate of 93.5%. More than 9 times out of 10, if you call that play, it is going to work. Do you like those odds more, or do you like the odds of having to stop Derrick Henry and company if you lose the coin flip in overtime? Because I know which odds I like way more. It was a low-risk play that Allen usually gets, and usually works out for them. It's a play where it is very hard to lose yards, and where there's not a whole lot to it. I can't blame McDermott for going for it and trying that considering those odds. And McDermott defended his decision after the game, and rightfully so. In the aftermath of this controversial decision, 
McDermott had no regrets. There are some coaches, like the Lehman Bennett example from 1977, where they tell the press afterwards that they wish they could have a do-over. Not McDermott. He had complete faith in Josh Allen, his MVP caliber quarterback, and said at the end of the day, I trust him. And I'll trust him again if we're in that situation again. I'll take Josh Allen 10 times out of 10. He then added, We're this far from winning the game. I owe it to my players. I believe in my players. I believe in my quarterback. I trust my guys. Obviously, we didn't get it done in this case, but I trust my players. A coach who wants to go for the win and calls a play that works roughly 94% of the time to try and make it happen, I can't fault him whatsoever for that, and good for him for sticking to his guns in the post-game press conference. No, this play did not work. Yes, the play cost the Bills the game at the end, and who knows how things would have played out if they kicked the field goal, even though I have a general idea having watched enough Titans games under Vrabel as to how it would have played out. But I am more than willing to give McDermott a pass for this play. When you consider the fact that the Bills' defense have been getting gashed all day, having allowed points in each of Tennessee's last six legitimate drives, the fact that Derrick Henry is a beast who is almost unstoppable at the end of a game, the fact that Buffalo would probably not have gotten the ball back if Tennessee won the overtime toss, the fact that Josh Allen and the Bills have been highly successful in this situation before, and the fact that if it worked, the Bills probably win the game, this is one decision you can definitely make a defense for. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.